Hello everyone, welcome back to another session on dentistry and more. So today we have a new section in oral pathology that is calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor or CEOT which is widely known as Pinburg tumor. So we have uh, n number of tumors uh, to cover up. So last uh, sessions we covered uh, various syndromes we have covered around uh, 9 to 10 syndromes now we are moving on to uh, tumor section and the first one is CEOT or pinbog tumor so let's see the details of CEOT calcifying Epithelial odontogenic tumor, CEOT or Pinburg tumor, which is benign in nature, epithelial in origin, and odontogenic one. So, odontogenic means it is nothing but which is derived from a specialized dental tissue. So, Pinburg tumors are locally invasive epithelial odontogenic neoplasm, which is characterized by presence of amyloid material that may become calcified. So it has a peculiar amyloid material which may become calcified over a period of time and it was first described by Dr. Jens J. Pinborg. Now let's move on to the pathogenesis. So uh, according to various authors, the Pinborg himself said it is originated from odontogenic epithelium. Some others said it is from reduced enamel epithelium. Uh, of closely related a unerupted tooth or some are saying uh, the possibility that it arises from rest of dental lamina or from basal cells of oral epithelium so the origin uh, has various theories or various concept it could be odontogenic epithelium reduced enamel epithelium uh, of a unerupted tooth and rest of dental lamina or basal cell of oral epithelium and it is associated with mutation of PTCH gene while moving on to the epidemiology it is most commonly seen among uh, 20 to 60 year old and the mean age is 40 years and the male to female uh, ratio is almost same but a little uh, higher predilection in male that is 6 is to 5 ratio and it is just one percentage of all odontogenic tumors and it has basically two types that is intraosseous or central type and extraosseous or peripheral type intraosseous is the most common that is 94 percentage which is uh, seen in mandible region compared to maxilla uh, it is a posterior part of uh, the bone ma mandible or maxilla so it has mandible have twice uh, more occurrence compared to maxilla and the peripheral type which is seen in anterior part that is extra osseous type mm, this is intra osseous that is a central one peripheral one is extra osseous so premolar molar region uh, is a most affected one and while moving on to the clinical features which is a painless mass with slow growth and it is associated with an impacted or unerupted tooth there will be nasal congestion epistaxis or headache and this peripheral soft tissue or extra osseous type the CEOT appears most commonly as a painless firm gingival mass that is this type anterior gingival uh, mass as it appears in peripheral or extra osseous type and it shows a little bit of ulceration on overlying mucosa and uh, sometimes if we go for surgical removal an underlying bony depression or saucerization has been seen in some cases so these are the clinical features so we covered pathogenesis epidemiology and clinical features now let's move on to the radiographic features so radiographic features 
we can see mixed radio lucent and radio opaque areas and can be unilocular or multilocular type and the most striking feature of CEOT is honeycomb or soap bubble appearance because of the scattered radio opacities it can be wind driven or snow falling type so never forget these two honeycomb or soap bubble or snow falling or wind driven appearance it coming in radiographic features because of its peculiar radiolucent or radio opaque areas now we have histopathology histopathology what are the cells seen in the staining process that is it is epithelial cells are present so these epithelial cells uh, which are like um, polyhedral in the form of sheets strands or uh, nests and these cells usually closely packed with few areas showing intracellular bridges and they may have indistinct outline or eosinophilic and a homogeneous cytoplasm and the cells resembles the cells of stratum intermedium of enamel organ so it has epithelial cells and the next one is eosinophilic material which is uh, seen between the epithelial cells and the stroma and it is thought to be synthesized by the epithelial cells and next thing is calcified deposit that is the unique feature of this tumor that's why its name came calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumors which are seen to be associated with amyloid deposits and can either be calcified amyloid or calcified collagen so this calcification uh, it can be in the form of lamellae formed by the fusion of small calcific deposits at different foci and they are referred to as lysergang rings so this is another unique feature of ceot lysergang rings and how it forms the calcified deposits it the lamella formed by the fusion of small uh, small calcified deposits at different foci so where different different foci this calcified deposits will form and it becomes a lysergang ring and also symptom like deposition is seen only after the amyloid is fully calcified so the next is uh, it can also have a nuclear pleomorphism with intercellular bridge and amyloid like material will be there cemental like components and also clear cells and it could be uh, langerhans cells so langerhans cells we had seen we had uh, discussed in our um, cells that is uh, pathognomonic uh, cells we had uh, discussed it already so clear cells and langerhans cells are seen not in every cases but uh, it is reported now we have differential diagnosis so what are the differential diagnosis so it could be amyloblastoma uh, regional odontodysplasia dentigerous cyst odontogenic keratocyst odontogenic myxoma these all could be the differential diagnosis of ceot and treatment part A treatment part is basically surgical enucleation and also in severe widespread cases should go for hemi mandibulectomy or hemi maxillectomy and prognosis is overall prognosis good and there is recurrence rate around 15 percentage so that's summary of calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor the takeaway points is its radiographic features that is honeycomb or soap bubble appearance and wintry one or falling snow appearance and also the lysergang rings lysergang rings it's very peculiar because it is a calcified ring so calcification happens that is a unique feature of ceot from the name itself you should uh, understand that there is calcification and it is associated with lysergang rings 
so uh, when you're writing about a tumor so you should go for uh, these uh, subheadings like pathogenesis little bit about introduction epidemiology clinical features radiographic features histopathology and differential diagnosis treatment and prognosis and always make sure that you highlight all these striking features like honeycomb when driven or snow falling and lisa gangrings so i'll come up with a new tumor uh, in my next session in dentistry and more thank you hello everyone welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more today we have a different tumor that is adenomatoid or endogenic tumor or aot so last class uh, we had covered a ceot that is calcifying epithelial or endogenic tumor from the name itself we will get an idea about the tumor so this is adenomatoid or endogenic tumor anyway or endogenic is something related to tooth or tooth forming tissues that is clear so adenomatoid is adeno means something related to gland so this tumor has peculiar gland like uh, appearance or gland like structures that is why this got adenomatoid or endogenic tumor now let's get into details of aot so adenomatoid or endogenic tumor as the name suggests it is a gland like structure formation in histological features that's why it got this peculiar name so we'll come to that later now let's see the basic introduction of this so it is also known as adenoameloblastoma or ameloblastic adenomatoid tumor so it is uh, always or sometimes in the previous time misdiagnosed as ameloblastoma that is why it got this name that is adenoameloblastoma and ameloblastic adenomatoid tumor so the one of the differential diagnosis is ameloblastoma so, aot or adenomatoid or endogenic tumor which is benign in nature and non invasive type but progressive lesion which is most commonly associated with unerupted maxillary canine so i also mentioned it as hamartomatous uh lesion hamartomatous is nothing but a disorganized uh, growth which is mimicking a neoplasm but the difference between hamartoma and a benign neoplasm is like its uh, growth rate uh, we cannot uh, measure there is no measurable growth rate is there whereas a benign tumor has growth rate measurable growth rate and it is uh, basically Uh, composed of tissues of origin uh, within it is found so it is not a particularly benign lesion hamartomatous is little different from benign lesion so it is most commonly seen i mentioned it is most commonly seen with maxillary canine mm, unerupted mm, maxillary canine and it is the fourth most common odontogenic tumor so among odontogenic tumor it is a fourth most common one and it can be divided into two variants basically one is central that is uh, intraosseous and peripheral which is uh, extraosseous okay so it has uh, basically two types central intraosseous and peripheral extraosseous so the central variant that is the intraosseous type has follicular and extra follicular subtypes follicular and extra follicular the follicular type will be associated with an impacted tooth and is the one which commonly get confused with the dentigerous cyst so it has central and peripheral that is intraosseous intraosseous and extraosseous intraosseous again has subtypes which is follicular and uh, extra follicular follicular is uh, the one which is associated with an impacted tooth and which is commonly uh, get confused as 
dendrogenesist so sometimes it is also seen that uh, cases with both aot and uh, dendrogenesist sometimes it get confused so sometimes very rarely both aot and dendrogenesist will be there in the same place in the 2 to 3 decade that is 20 to 30 years or the 10 to 20 or 20 to 30 years that is a second and third decade and it is most commonly or mostly seen in anterior part of maxilla it is slowly enlarging a swelling type sometimes the gums will be very swollen the gingiva will be very swollen and it is associated with an impacted tooth and mostly a maxillary canine so females are most commonly affected than males maxilla is affected than mandible anterior part is affected than the posterior jaw so it is seen in second and third decade anterior maxilla is mostly affected it is a slowly enlarging swelling which is associated with impacted tooth so when you are studying aot that is adenomatoid odontogenic tumor the two key points are it is like a adenomatoid that is a gland like structures are present and another thing is it is associated with unerupted maxillary canine so these two are the take away points of aot it has the adenomatoid structures that is gland like structures adeno is nothing but gland like and it is associated with unerupted maxillary canine now we'll move on to the radiographic features so radiographic features basically it is a radio lucent lesion and well defined radio lucent lesion and sometimes it gets calcified in some areas or some cases it get calcified few areas the those areas will be uh, shown in radiograph as radio opacities and it is associated with as we know an unerupted tooth and it sometimes looks like a dentigerous cyst so dentigerous cyst also associated with an erupted tooth so it sometimes uh, misdiagnosed as dentigerous cyst now move on to the histology histology part is the uh, most important part there we have this adenomatoid structures so it is a well encapsulated solid or partly cystic lesions so it is well encapsulated solid or partly cystic lesion so on histology it shows sheets strands and whole masses of epithelium which differentiate into columnar ameloblast like cells so can roughly seen the columnar type cells columnar type cells this is not a very uh, good picture i just want to show the duct like structures with columnar cells uh, aligned at the periphery so sheets strands or whole masses of epithelium so epithelium is differentiated so epithelium is changed into columnar ameloblast like cells which forms it. so these columnar cells forming the duct or tubule like structures so this is a tubule like structure so that's why it got this peculiar name that is adenomatoid tumor because of its tubule like structures how this tubule like structure forming because the columnar cells differentiated or arranged themselves like this making a duct like or tubule like structures so it has a central space containing homogeneous eosinophilic rim of various thickness so that ring is particularly known as hyaline ring so it forms as a hyaline ring and the other features like stellate reticulum like spindle cells occasional round or polygonal epithelial cell which dominate the tissue between cell rich nodules so that is just a histological characteristics the stellate reticulum like spindle cells occasional round or polygonal epithelial cells which dominate the tissue between 
cell rich nodules and small amount of eosinophilic material or calcification also may be present between the cells so little bit of calcification or eosinophilic material also seen between the cells so this is the duct like structure so this is the duct like structures lined by one or two columnar cells so these are the columnar cells which is lining the duct like structure so this is the characteristic feature of aot so this is a key point this is a take away point that is a duct like structure in histology so if you are seeing a histology slide also it is very easy to understand aot so there will be a duct like structure how this is forming this is by differentiation of columnar cells columnar cells arranged at the periphery one or two columnar cells making a duct like structure so adenomatoid odontogenic tumor is also known as adenoameloblastoma or ameloblastic adenomatoid tumor so the two key points are which is associated with unerupted maxillary canine and it has adeno uh, duct like or tubule like structures with columnar cells at the borders and the treatment is most commonly it is enucleated uh, it is basically a conservative surgical excision uh, rather than the radical one and it is most commonly it does not hello everyone welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more today's topic is ameloblastoma or adamantinoma it is a most important uh, topic in oral pathology that is coming under odontogenic tumors so in odontogenic tumors we have seen uh, aot that is uh, adenomatoid odontogenic tumor and the next one was ceot calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor and the most important one is ameloblastoma so all are odontogenic tumors this dental related tissues are the cause or the uh, origin it is originated from dental related tissues now let's uh, move on to ameloblastoma or adamantinoma from the name itself we get an idea about the tumor that is ameloblastoma so amelo means uh, we know ameloblast so it is related to enamel and blasto means uh, germ so it is originating from enamel tissues that is why it got ameloblastoma and another name is adamantinoma because it is uh, adamantinoma another uh, tumor which is seen in the longer bones the histological similarity with that type of tumors with the ameloblastoma gave gave this name to ameloblastoma that is adamantinoma so the histological similarities between the adamantinoma of longer bones so it got two names ameloblastoma or adamantinoma so robinson defined this ameloblastoma as unicentric non functional intermittent in growth anatomically benign and clinically persistent so it is a unicentric non functional intermittent in growth anatomically benign and clinically persistent tumor so we can classify it under two headings one is clinical classification another one is histological classification in clinical classification the most common is central variant that is the intraosseous type so in intraosseous type we have two types that is the most common one that is multi cystic variant that is conventional or multi cystic or solid type tumors and the second one is unicystic that is in central or intraosseous variant the next one is extraosseous or peripheral and another type is pituitary ameloblastoma and the last one is malignant ameloblastoma this is clinical classification central peripheral pituitary malignant in central we have 
multicystic and unicystic and multicystic is the most common type in histological type it is based on the histological uh, appearance follicular plexiform acanthomatous granular basal cell and desmoplastic so it is follicular plexiform acanthomatous granular basal cell and desmoplastic now let's see what are the etiological factors for ameloblastoma the common etiologies are traumatic episodes so the trauma happening to uh, uh, these structures and extraction cystectomy and various uh, type of fractures infection and uh, dietary deficiency especially vitamin D and lack of protein intake and viral infections so all these could be etiological factors for ameloblastoma so it could be a trauma extraction cystectomy fractures infection vitamin D deficiency lack of protein intake and viral infection so so in pathogenesis it is believed that it is derived either from cell rest of enamel organ remnants of dental lamina hardwick's sheath epithelial rest of molasses so all these could be the originating uh, factor because it is originating from enamel tissues and also could be epithelium of odontogenic cysts most commonly the dentigerous cyst and odontoma and also it could be from basal cell of surface epithelium of jaw and uh, it could be due to the disturbance of developing enamel organ and also from heterotopic epithelium of pituitary gland so that is about pathogenesis so we discussed uh, the classification that is clinical and histological type etiology and pathogenesis so the clinical features include that most commonly seen between 20 to 50 years of age group and there is no gender predilection it is both the uh, genders are equally affected there is no predilection for a particular gender but the black uh, race people are more affected than the white race and the mandible is uh, almost affected by 80 percentage cases than maxilla only 20 percentage are restricted to maxilla and mandibular molars areas are more prone for ameloblastoma compared to the anterior or premolar areas while moving on to the signs and symptoms it is a slow growing painless hard and non-tender avoid swelling okay it is a very slowly growing painless hard non-tender avoid swelling which enlarges in size as it causes little discomfort in early stage so at the early stage it is very asymptomatic it does not cause any pain so any other symptoms so it slowly slowly it enlarges to become a avoid swelling and large mass so facial asymmetry will be a problem there will be mobility of teeth and exfoliation and the dentures will be ill-fitting because of this enlarged size of the maxilla or the mandible and pain or paresthesia if any nerve is impinged we have various nerves in these areas we have inferior alveolar nerve we have mandibular nerve we have facial nerve so paresthesia will be there um, affected there will be paresthesia or pain and there will be inability to occlude and there will be ulcerations so it is a slowly growing painless mass now because there will be very dis little discomfort in the early stages it's con so it continuously grows uh, unless it shows any very clinical evident symptoms in absence of treatment if it is left untreated what happens it will become extremely disfiguring fungating and ulcerative mass with eggshell cracking and fluctuation so it keep on increasing if it is not treated so there will be disfiguring and uh, fungating and it will become very ulcerative and there will be eggshell cracking uh, and there will be fluctuation so the palpitation elicit heart sensation on and or crepitus also will be there 
so crepitus or heart sensation on palpitation also will be seen if it is not treated so it is not an encapsulated uh, tumor and it invades the surrounding tissue and the bone destruction is a very common feature in ameloblastoma also root resorption because it is continuously growing and it invades the surrounding tissues the surrounding bones will be destroyed the root resorption will be there so what happens if it is in case of maxilla so it is commonly affecting tuberosity it causes nasal obstruction proptosis of eye damage to the vital structure and it involves cranial base so there will be gross facial distortion if it is in the maxilla uh, maxillary bone mural ameloblastoma is nothing but ameloblastoma from a dentigerous cyst so the histological features it has tall columnar cell hyperchromatic nucleus palisaded nucleus reverse polarity of nuclei and subnuclear vesicle formation so this is the histological features so ameloblastoma it is a uh, lengthier topic so we have seen uh, the basic features and clinical features signs and symptoms what happens if it is not treated and in case of maxilla and about histology parts now we have various histological types of uh, ameloblastoma now let's see the histological classification of ameloblastoma so in histologic type so it is divided into six types follicular plexiform acanthomatous granular basal cell and desmoplastic so it is based on the histological picture or histological detailing of ameloblastoma so we have seen based on the clinical features also so now let's see one by one so in follicular pattern it is all uh, explaining the histological pictures so it's not very easy to draw and explain it anyway uh, let me explain it uh, without picture so when you're writing for exam always keep pictures for any syndrome the histological explaining requires pictures so let's see the details follicular type the small discrete islands of tumor cells with peripheral cuboidal or columnar cells nuclei will be polarized and it resembles a ameloblast ameloblast we know the enamel forming cells and cyst formation is relatively common stellate reticulum like cells prominently enclosed by columnar or cuboidal cells so it has nuclei polarized with peripheral columnar cells and the cyst formation is common in follicular type of ameloblastoma the second one is plexiform the cells that is ameloblast like cells arranged in irregular masses okay so here we have small discrete islands of tumor cells here it is irregular masses and network of interconnecting strands of cells and each strand is bound, bounded by a columnar cell the columnar cell is common in all type of ameloblastoma so between this stellate reticulum we have less prominent tissues compared to the follicular ameloblastoma so the stellate reticulum like tissues is less prominent and here it is more, more prominent uh, whereas plexiform it is less prominent and areas of cystic degeneration is also common acanthomatous type the cells occupying the position of stellate reticulum undergo squamous metaplasia so stellate reticulum like cells are present all the types so acanthomatous it is the name itself saying acanthomatous we know what is acantho uh, lysis we have seen in uh, pemphigus so acanthomatous is a cell uh, to cell addition so here we are getting a squamous metaplasia and keratin formation or keratin pearls is seen 
whereas the granular cells it is marked transformation of stellate reticulum uh, reticular cells it becomes a coarse granular eosinophilic appearance uh, type with peripheral columnar and also hyperchromatism and also reverse polarity is also seen the basal cell type is why it is known as basal cell uh, type uh, basal cell ameloblastoma because it resembles basal cell carcinoma of skin that is bcc and it is the rarest form of ameloblastoma that is histologic type and we can see hyperchromatic um, less columnar which is arranged in sheets without peripheral uh, palisading nature so that is about basal cell the desmoplastic is we have dense collagen stroma which is hypocellular and hyalinized which is grow in thin uh, strands and uh, cords of epithelium which uh, proliferation seems to be compressed and fragmented by hyalinized stroma so in desmoplastic we have a collagen stroma which is hypocellular and hyalinized and this proliferation uh, compress and fragments the hyalinized stroma so this proliferation will compress and it make uh, the stroma uh, fragmented uh, appearance in desmoplastic so it is uh, more of a content uh, in ameloblastoma uh, it is asked for a very uh, uh, longer question that is 14 mark question you can uh, build up the content by writing this histological type that is follicular plexiform acanthomatous granular basal cell and desmoplastic so every type you need to have a key point so follicular type it is uh, like uh, nuclei is polarized and it resembles ameloblast plexiform it is uh, less prominent follicular ameloblast that is stellate reticulum type tissue is less prominent here in acanthomatous there is squamous metaplasia in granular cells the stellate reticulum becomes coarse granule granular or eosinophilic appearance in basal cell it looks like basal cell carcinoma desmoplastic this compression and fragmentation of hyalinized stroma will be there so most of the features are same for all but it differs that's why it got this name so from the name itself we get an idea uh, how it differs so that is about histologic histologic type of ameloblastoma uh, the next variety is unicystic ameloblastoma this we had seen uh, in clinical classification where we had a uh, multicystic that is very common unicystic is uh, not very common type so unicystic ameloblastoma which is uh, nothing but a single cystic cavity uh, unlike the multicystic ameloblastoma it is seen in very younger group that is around 20 years and the gender predilection is same as uh, multicystic the male and female has uh, equal uh, chances of getting this um, unicystic and it is most commonly seen in 90 percentage of uh, in mandible and that also in posterior part and it is uh, typically surrounds the crown of unerupted third molar okay so third molar uh, associated uh, ameloblastoma is unicystic one and it has basically three types that is luminal intraluminal and mural Okay, so uh, luminal is nothing but the tumor is confined to the luminal surface of the cyst by fibrous connective tissue partially or totally so this is luminal type it is confined to the luminal surface of the cyst by fibrous connective tissue intraluminal the tumor nodules projects from the cystic lining the tumor nodules projects from cystic lining and the mural one is the tumor infiltrates the fibrous cystic wall so these are the three types of unicystic ameloblastoma in mural type the tumor infiltrates the fibrous cystic wall 
and uh, coming to the radiographic features so radiographic features uh, unilocular or multilocular radiolucency can be seen and there is a striking radiographic appearance in unicystic ameloblastoma or ameloblastoma that is honeycomb or soap bubble appearance okay so honeycomb or soap bubble appearance so it will be like compartments compartments soap bubble we know how soap bubble appears all will be clubbed together a bunch of soap bubbles so the multilocular radiolucency with compartmentalized appearance due to the bony septa so there will be radiolucency a big radiolucency but there will be compartmentalization due to the bone septum in between so it gives a honeycomb appearance or a soap bubble appearance that is a characteristic radiographic feature of unicystic ameloblastoma now uh, we have investigation that is mostly the radiographs will be taken and we can go for biopsy and also CT, MRI or ultrasound. So apart from unicystic ameloblastoma, we have uh, malignant ameloblastoma, pituitary ameloblastoma and peripheral ameloblastoma which are not uh, very much important. So peripheral ameloblastoma is like very, which is very rare type which develops in soft tissues of gingiva and mucosa and it is non-invasive uh, whereas pituitary ameloblastoma is like uh, it is also known as Ratke's pouch tumor which involves neoplasma of CNS uh, whereas malignant ameloblastoma it is a malignant transformation of um, normal ameloblastoma which is a very very rare lesion so those are the three uh, types which we have seen in classification a malignant pituitary and peripheral ameloblastoma now how do we uh, go with the treatment so what are the treatment options we have uh, many treatment options that is radical and conservative surgical excision end block resection segmental resection curettage chemical and electrocautery chemotherapy and radiation so simple excision or uh, nucleation is also there so if we have uh, the peripheral ameloblastoma we can do a simple excision uh, enucleation or curettage is in peripheral ameloblastoma it is the removal of uh, tumor by scraping it from the surrounding normal tissue so that is an uh, en enucleation or curettage End block resection. End block resection is uh, removal of tumor with a rim of uninvolved bone, but maintaining the continuity of jaw. So in end block resection, we are removing uh, a rim, a rim of uninvolved bone, but we will continue or maintain the uh, the jaw. It will not be completely, or it will not be uh, segmented next one is segmental resection it is removal of a segment of maxilla or mandible up to the including hemisection or more so in block resection it will not be segmented only a part of normal bone will be removed in segmental resection the segment of maxilla or mandible uh, removed it, it may include hemimaxillectomy or hemimandibulectomy and this is the most commonly used treatment because it has very less chance of recurrence segmental resections so it is noted that the lesion most likely to recur after segmental resection are those over 5 cm so more than 5 cm will have a chance of recurrence even after the segmental resection so chemotherapy we know uh, we do chemotherapy uh, using uh, platinum agents uh, we can we can use cyclophosphamide cisplatin windblastin and electrocautery is uh, another method and we have also radiation therapy 
so we have finished amyloblastoma it was a very lengthy session because it has various classification uh, classification based on uh, clinical uh, nature and the histological type then we had seen the pathogenesis the clinical features the radio features and the histological type unicystic uh, and its detailed and various treatment options investigation so amyloblastoma is a or endogenic tumor mm. and one of the most common or endogenic tumor it is uh, along with CEOT and AOT calcifying epithelial or pinbock tumor and adenomatoid or endogenic tumor amyloblastoma so these are a very common question a commonly asked essay question uh, CEOT AOT and amyloblastoma so I'll come up with a new session on dentistry and more thank you